Does anyone have a, a testimony this evening? Hasn't today been beautiful? Amen. Amen. If you have your Bibles, please turn with us to 2 Corinthians chapter 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. We want to look at some folks today that even though they were difficult times, even though they were troublesome times, uh, they were still stood firm upon God's Word. And they still stood firm even in troubled times. You know, it's easy uh, to stand firm when, uh, when our children are well, uh, when all the bills are paid, uh, when, when our job's going good, uh, when things around us is just, uh, you know, it's rainy, uh, when it, at night, in the middle of the day, it's 75 and sunny, right? It's easy to be, have a good time like that, isn't it? But when things aren't so good, does that mean that we give up and we wait till better days? No, 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 that's not it at all. Uh, you know, we studied uh, Joseph uh, this past Sunday morning in our Sunday school class. And, and we see here today that Joseph could have gave up on his purity in the midst of temptation, but he had much more character and he had much more, uh, uh, much more uh, thought about his, his heavenly father and what he thought about himself than what Potiphar's wife thought about himself. And as we see here today, I, I just want to look at some things of 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and start reading in verse 2. Now, verses 1, we have an understanding. It's just a greetings. Now, the, the letters that we write today, uh, we don't write a whole lot of letters anymore, do we? It's, it's a lost art. And I think that our, I think our kids uh, need to really get back into writing more letters, and, and we need to get back into more writing more letters. And, and if, if you read letters that's uh, you know, several years old, uh, and you look at them, and you can see how they, they just flow much better. And, uh, uh, you know, I, Paul, or, or when he is writing this, this right here should have been, in today's letters, would have been at the end of the letter, Right? You know, this, he has his greetings at the first part of it. Uh, uh, so in, in the New Testament, in, 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 the, in the epistles that he writes, you know, this first verse, we're not over skipping it for, because it's not important, uh, but just for the sake of time, I, I wanted to let you know what it is. It's just a greeting. It's a salutation saying this is who I am and this is where I'm at. And, and it would be on the bottom side or the, or the bottom part of the letter. But we see here in verse 2, it says, Grace be unto you and peace from our God, our Father, from, from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the Father uh, of mercies, and the God of all comfort, who commanded us in all tribulation, who commanded us in, let's, let's read that, who commanded us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them that are, that are, that are in any trouble. By comfort wherewith uh, we ourselves are comforted of God. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also aboundeth by Christ. Father, we ask today, Lord, for your blessing. Lord, we ask today, Lord, for your, uh, Lord, your, uh, your spirit, Lord, to fall down upon us. Lord, we pray in a big way. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, we see here today as we go for, he's in verses 4, it says, We, we comfort uh, we comfort us in all. In, in all our tribulation, that we may be able to be comforted, comfort them when, which are in any tribulation. Uh, as we think here today and as we look, uh, we see that he's letting us have an understanding that he says it's our trouble and in any trouble. Uh, we will face trouble. It's not uh, uh, if so or if it's not how much, but we will and it's not if, but it's when we face trouble. And, 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 and Paul is giving a good example here in this first, in the first chapter, 2 Corinthians. He's wanting them to know you will face trouble, but we must be comforted. And we must comfort one another when they do face those troubles. This for a moment. Let's look at some folks down through history in God's Word. Some in the Old Testament and others in the New. That even in adversity, even in great punishment, they still trusted in the Lord and they were totally committed to Him. 
Let's turn over to Genesis chapter 39 and verses 7 and 9. Uh, we see here today that uh, now we know uh, that, uh, that Daniel, that we know here today that uh, as we look and as we see that, that Joseph uh, was placed in, uh, uh, placed in a... Uh, Placed in a pit, uh, he was sold into slavery, uh, and, his, and, his, and, his, and his, uh, his brothers was very envious of what was taking place in his life. His brothers were very jealous of the things that were taking place. Now we understood that, but here we see uh, after he had been slowed, sold into slavery, and we see that he was uh, brought to Egypt, and he was placed in Potiphar's house, uh, and the Pharaoh's captain of the guard, uh, we see that uh, there was uh, some temptation that come upon them. Here we see, and it came to pass after these things uh, that the master's wife cast eyes upon Joseph and she said, lie with me. But he refused and, and said unto the master's wife, behold, my master wrought not what is, uh, uh, what is with me in the house and he hath committed all, thing, all that he hath in my hands. There is none greater in the house than I. Neither hath he kept back anything from me but thee. Because thou art his wife, how then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? He said, now listen, uh, this is, he's given me everything. Uh, Potiphar has, has, has given him control of all of it. Uh, he would be, his, uh, he would be his, uh, his manager of all of his assets and, and everything that is around him. And David, we see here today, was totally committed to God's Word. Even in the midst of temptation, even in, if you read that a little later, he kept fleeing. Uh, finally, the last time he fleed, uh, Potiphar's wife grabbed uh, part of his, uh, his garments. Uh, and, and as he was running, uh, he, she falsely accused Joseph uh, of doing things that wasn't of Joseph and ended up being in prison because of these lies. You see, even in prison, that Joseph had integrity. And Joseph was totally committed to God's work. You know, we see here today, even in trouble sometimes, Joseph still had purity. Joseph still had purity. You know, we are called to purity. Amen? We are set apart we are called to purity. It's not a, it, it, it is not, well, if it, certain things. No, it is a commandment that we live a pure life. And Joseph said, whether I'm in Potiphar's home or whether I'm watching my fa father's sheep, whether I'm, uh, whether I'm in jail or whether I have all the means uh, that God has given me to be able to lead a country, I will live a pure life. We see as we move forward that it's not just purity but a purpose. Even in troublesome times, we must live a life that is pure, but we also must live a life that is purposeful. That is purposeful. You may say, well, preacher, you know, I'm just, I just don't know why I'm going through this, or I don't know why this has taken place, or I'm not sure. It doesn't make sense. Some things that God does, does will not and does not make sense to us. We are not His mind and we don't, do not have the ability to be able to understand or fathom what He has for us. But on the other side of whatever we're going through, He has something better for us. The something better for us may be when we're called into glory. Do you remember, you remember Paul when he says, I prayed three times for this to be removed. And, 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 and Christ spoke to me and told me that His grace is sufficient. So we have an understanding also that the woman with the issue of blood for 12 years, that Christ took care of it right immediately, wasn't it? Some things He takes care of immediately. And sometimes He wants us to understand just how big He really is day in and day out. God's grace is sufficient. We see the purpose we see the purpose-filled life that Daniel lived over in Daniel chapter, Daniel chapter 1 and verses 8. Uh, you know, if, if you studied much of Daniel and looked at much of Daniel and seen the things that, uh, that has taken place here, uh, Daniel was one that could have said, I don't understand what all of this is about. I don't understand why I'm here. I don't understand why I was taken away from my home. I don't understand. And he could have just went along with the crowd. He could have just said, whatever you want me to do, I can't do anything about it, and I'm just going to... Just, I'm just going to fold. That's, no, just, that's all they are to it. 
Over in Daniel chapter 1 and verse 8, it says, But Daniel purposed. Don't you think we need to purpose in our life? Don't you think that we need to purpose in our life to say, no matter what comes our way, I'm going to purposely serve God's Word. It takes us purposely reading God's Word every day to be able to get into God's Word. It takes us purposely serving God every day to be able to serve Him in sincerity and truth. It takes us purposely coming to church. I didn't see any horses out here in the, car, in the parking lot. You know, old Doc Adams on gun smoke. He'll fall asleep on, the, on his, on his car- carriage and the old horse will take him back to the to town. I didn't see any horses out here. You all purposely got ready and you come to church. See, it's... If we live a Christian life, it's purposely. It's, it's, it's something that we have to do. It's something that, that we strive to do. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with a portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. So he purposely, he purposely lived a life that was filled of what now? Did that get him where where we can see here today that Daniel's life was much like Joseph. It was up and down and and sometimes sideways and sometimes up on its end. But yet Daniel purposely served the Lord. No matter if he was enslaved, no matter if he was on, 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 on one of the highs, no matter if he was on one of the lows, God does not require us to give in and say, well, today I'm going to sit down because I just don't feel like it. There may have some days that we don't feel like it. We may have a season in life that we just don't think, things aren't fair. I'm not, I'm not uh, belittling someone if they think that. But, but what I want us to realize is that even in when things aren't going right, even when we face tragedy in our life, even when we just don't feel too churchy, let's purposely serve the Lord. Let's purposely serve Him. Some of you all have been through tragedy over the last few years. Maybe it struck your home. Maybe it's a big, a big job change. Maybe you've had family changes. But I see your life that you purposely served Him. You have purposely sought to see what God's purpose was for you. And I believe that's what we must do. We must purposely look and actively ask, Lord, what is your will for my life? What is you know, things that changed or things just aren't what they used to be? Lord, are you trying to change something? Are you trying to show me something? Or, Lord, I've ran into a block wall with this tragedy. Are you directing me in a different way? And I've seen you do that. And I've seen you excel. And I've seen that you have a great purpose to serve the Lord. And that's what God wants us to do. Are we able to do that on our own? No. Daniel did not purpose uh, uh, to to serve the Lord uh, for his own self-gratification, but he purposed to serve the Lord so people could see his God and his king and his master to be able to know that there's something greater than a kingdom or a king or someone that sits on a throne with a scepter in his hand that is a worldly king and a worldly scepter. Listen, we have a king that sits on a throne that's much higher than any reign uh, any earthly king has ever set. So we see we here we not just have purity during trouble, we not just have purpose during trouble, but we have privilege during trouble, during trying times, during difficult measures. Over in John chapter 1 and verse 29, here we see that uh, we see John the Baptist. Now, if John the Baptist was around today, maybe we'd call him a hillbilly. Maybe we'd call him a mountain man. Uh, you know, we've got, uh, we don't have cable, but we've got friendly TV. It's got all the good shows. It's got all the good westerns, and it's got military history, and it's got history, and, and there's mountain men that come on. Maybe... Maybe John the Baptist would have been on that mountain man show. I don't know. But he was different is what I'm trying to say. His means were different. His, his, his actions were different. But most of all, his message was peculiar and different. 
We see here in John chapter 1 and verse 29, it says, And the next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him and said, Behold, look, here he is, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. He said, Behold, look at him. This is, this is who he is. This is the man. Behold the Lamb of God. We have a privilege to present Christ. Can you imagine John the Baptist as he was presenting Christ? He says, Behold, the Lamb of God which taketh away the sins of the world. He had the privilege of uh, of presenting Christ to the world. He had the privilege of preaching a new message. A new message that they had never heard of before. A message to the Gentiles that there is someone that could take care of their needs spiritually. We see here today that we have a privilege to preach and to proclaim the message, the same message that old John the Baptist did. We have the privilege of doing it today. In troublesome times, we have a privilege. Boy, isn't it good? The privilege is that I get to tell what Jesus has done for me. I get to show what Jesus has done for me. You say, preacher, do you do that every day like you should? No, 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 no. Uh-uh. I'm not gonna, no, I'm not even near what I should some days. But I'm grateful today that He affords me the privilege. He allows me to have the privilege to preach the message of the good news of Jesus Christ. Isn't that good? So we have the purity during troublesome times. We have a purpose during troublesome times. We have a privilege and we have the persistence of Paul during troublesome times. Over in 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4, we see the persistence of Paul. Now you can have an understanding of what all Paul did and you can read that and you can look upon that and you can see the different things that he accomplished. You can see the different things that he did. But this right here is probably one of the, uh, the, uh, it it, was his dying testimony. You know, some people write their obituaries before they pass away. Well, this right here was one of Paul's segments or snippets of his obituary. It says, I am now ready to be offered. The time of my departure is at hand. He said, I fought a good fight. I finished my course. I've kept the faith. So when we fight and we're persistent, it's a battle. It's a battle to read our Bible every day. Satan doesn't want us to get encouraged or be changed by the power of God's Word. It's a battle to come to church. i got three kids. Brandy works a job. We live a life. It's a battle to come to church. Just a few weeks ago, I wasn't, uh, I think I scared Brother Terry. I, I come in late, and that was the first time in nearly 10 years that I've been here that I come in late. Sometimes it happens. Terry thought he was going to have to preach. According to J.D., we look close enough to be like brothers. It's a fight. But when we fight, we must finish our course. We don't fight against flesh and blood, but we fight against powers of, of, this, of the world. We fight against those things that Satan does not want us to come to church. Satan does not want us to be part of a Bible-believing church. Satan doesn't want people to watch uh, 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 Facebook Live or our DVDs. Uh, Satan doesn't want people in the parking lot or, or, or right here or maybe possibly sitting on their porch. Satan doesn't want any of that. But when we finish our course, we can say, I've kept the faith. I've kept the faith. It hasn't been easy. It's not for the faint of heart. It's not something just a sissy does, but it's something that we press towards the mark of the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. I move and I press. So it's a persistent in our faith. It's persistent in our faith. Um, It's a persistent in our fight. And it's a persistent to finish. I'm persistent to finish. Have you all been working on a project? Remember when we were building our home? Everybody was waiting on me to get done painting. Making good time. Dad come down and helped. Some other people come in. But there was times that I'd get off work at 3 o'clock or 3.15 and and I'd run all the way out to St. James where we live and I would paint till 1 o'clock in the morning. 
1.30 in the morning. Drive 45 minutes back to Mossheim and be back to work at 6.30. I was persistent because I wanted to get it done. I was tired. I didn't want to do it no more. And the only way I didn't couldn't the only way that I wouldn't have to do it no more is to finish it. That's our Christian walk. The only way that we will not fight and will not battle as a Christian is when we finish. Is when we finish. Paul's saying, I've done all of this. And because I've done all of this, there's a crown of life waiting for us. Trouble sometimes requires us to be persistent. And then we see here today that in troublesome times we can know that we're not just serving anyone or we're not just working for anyone, but we're working for the preeminent Christ. Let's turn over to Colossians chapter 1 and verses 18. I know that we've looked at this passage during our Sunday morning service some, but let's look at it. It says, "For and He is the head of all the body. Who's He? Who's He? Jesus Christ. For He is the head of the body, the church. Who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead? And in all things, he might have preeminence. Preeminence, mighty, power, superiority, deity over it all. And he is the head of the body, the church. Who are we serving? We're serving Christ. Even in tribulation, it's not about me nor you, but it's about the preeminent Christ. That's who we serve. That's who we serve. Do you all remember Preacher Lewis coming in here? Do you all remember him? I know there was times that he probably didn't feel very good. There was times that he just didn't walk very well. But did you ever see him without a big smile? I don't know if I ever did. Boy, he'd walk in back there and he'd just smile. Why? If you'd ask him, because he had, I'm sure he he would have said, because I serve a risen Savior. Because I have victory in Jesus. Because he set me free. Because I sing of his amazing grace. Because one day I'm going to fly away. Are you seeing the point here? Even in tribulation, we can still serve the preeminent Christ. Today, we all face trials. Some of y'all's trials are bigger than, majority of y'all's trials are bigger than mine, no doubt. I'm not about to put my feet in your shoes. But we all face trials. Some sort of another. We all go through seasons that, that are just not fair. And they're, not, they're just trying. But I hope that we can be like Joseph and be pure. Be like Daniel and be purposeful. Be like John and say, I have a privilege to be able to, to, be, able to be a part. Be persistent like Paul because we can serve the preeminence of Christ. That's what we do today. It's not about me. It's not about Limestone Free Will Baptist Church, but it's about Jesus. Him crucified, risen, and coming back one day to receive His children. That's why we're doing all of it. Father, I praise You today. I thank You for Your Word, how it speaks to us. I thank You for the time that You've allowed us to stand behind this wonderful desk, sacred desk, and and proclaim Your Word and Your Gospel. Lord, I pray today, Lord, it'll be an encouragement to someone I ask, and I plead with You today. In Jesus' name, Amen. As we all stand, please. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to me. I love Him so. I love Him so. I love Him so. 
He's so good to 